to you, Toupissant. Madame de Polignac. It's dreadful ages. All is lost. How were you able to leave Saint Clou? Earlier, after you ventured out into the palace grounds, all of the machines that were guarding us set out after you. I seized the opportunity to go to the stables and jump into a horseless carriage. What are you doing here, madame? The children, Aegis. Charlotte and the Dauphin. The Queen and the Marquis de Lafayette did everything they could do to save them from the King's madness. They spent days working out every detail of this operation with the greatest secrecy. The preparations for departure with our accomplices in the Queen's house. The children's escape hidden inside this wagon. Our meeting here, in this very place, then our departure with the riders who were to ensure our safe passage all the way to Austria. They would have been safe there with their uncle, the Emperor. But you can see for yourself. The children are nowhere to be seen. Oh, Monsieur Clery. He... he was the Dauphin's valet. The poor soul gave his life to protect the little ones. Madame. between Paris and Liège. Perhaps Madame de Polignac will know what this means. Four horses for three men. Someone is missing. Madame. The attackers all bear the same red cap with an embroidered rooster. It's the symbol worn by those who support the Duc d'Orléans. One of them had a map indicating all the staging posts from here to the Principality of Liège. Liège? That rabble-ridden city is where the Duke and his miscreants have established their base. Over here, there are four dead horses, and the body of a third man wearing a red cap. Four horses for three men. That means one assailant managed to get away. It's beyond doubt. The Duke's men have taken the children. They're the ones behind this ambush. And they knew every detail of our plans. We were betrayed. But surely the ambush did not go exactly as planned. Three of them lost their lives. That's true. If only we could catch the one who was able to escape. But now that I think about it, the riders that the Marquis de Lafayette promised us, if they made it here, they may have been able to surprise the kidnappers and stop them from carrying out their misdeed. By the grace of God, they may already be on their way to Vienna with the children. I shall get to the bottom of this. Which garrison is this squad from? They are stationed at the Hotel des Invalides. The riders must have left from there. Very well. I will try to retrace their steps. As for you, please return to the Queen at once. You have taken enough risks as it is. Find the children, Aegis. Je vous en supplie.
pursued Robespierre's men. They perished in the line of duty.
must carry on, I beg you! I'll never make it. I'm out of breath. The land won't get you. Soon I have just a bit more. We're almost there. Ottomans ravaged the church and slaughtered the faithful.
This machine is alone, and the door is barricaded. He must hold. Did you see how easily those demons entered the church? Don't be afraid. I mean you no harm. Oh, Seigneur. He can speak. What? What do you want with us, Automat? What happened in this church? You should know. It was your kind that slaughtered these lambs. I don't think those who were able to escape stand much of a chance either. Where are the survivors? They're hiding in the catacombs behind the church. There's also the gentleman that the automats took alive. Where did they take the gentleman? We haven't the slightest idea. That's enough questions now. Leave us be, but do.
getting closer to Les Invalides. Here, I should be able to cross the moat easily. sustainable, Your Majesty. Your mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty, as long as it is distributed fairly. The representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your Estates General. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned Cahiers de Doléances. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware. I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne.
Suzanne. My dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. Oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. Oh, it's impossible to describe all the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the King has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And, most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Eglise Sainte Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger. While the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago, the representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, mon père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided. 
And we are unarmed. Without you, without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia Convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge. We must speak, you and I, in private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why is the king sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear. After everything I've done for him. My abnegation. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refused to accept any remuneration for my services. In order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres. From my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in a tailor-made armoire d'affaires in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur Necker. Madame? Eh bien. Do you come bearing good news? I'm not done investigating yet. Don't give up, I beg you. Remember, the last time I saw my poor wife, we were in the Église Sainte-Marie on Rue de Bourgogne. That's in the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. As for the bonds, you'll find them in the Armoire de... Aegis, a word, s'il vous plaît.
Aegis, a word, super play. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Have your efforts paid off? Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Twillery Palace. Well, that old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This, madame, is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the King's chambers. What luck could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. If only Monsieur Bey were here, he would find a solution for you in no time. To free him, I would have to go back to the Louvre. Well, then I think you should. Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. I'm sure he'll have no trouble finding you something you can use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Good. I will go and find him. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. Eh bien. Do you come bearing news from Monsieur Marat? No. Not yet. I have it on good authority that he is in the quarries in Montmartre. He's the only person who could show you a way to reach the Bastille. Don't forget. Is your plan to arm the populace going as planned? Oh, far from it, madame. The situation is hopeless. Even if they were armed and formed into battalions, the Patriots would not be able to fight. Why is that? Most of the strategic points in the city are inaccessible. A strange illness strikes all who try. They are seized by an irrational fear. One so great that those who do not lose consciousness go mad or perish on the spot. This makes it impossible to do anything. Any attempt at an uprising is a fool's errand. The locations you mention share a common feature. A statue holding a lantern. That's right. From what little I could make out, they appear to be depictions of a Vestal Virgin watching over the sacred fire. Une lanterne des morts! What do you mean, monsieur? Lanterns of the dead. Ancient stone pillars that are found near some cemeteries. Our ancestors kept a fire going on top of them. Today, no one knows what they were used for. A symbol of light triumphing over darkness, perhaps? Others claim that human bones, mercury and lime, were burnt there. Some odious sorcery that was meant to entrap the tormented souls that wandered around the burial grounds. That makes sense and confirms my observations. I am now certain that the King's Lanterns capture the anima essence of the dead who have been cast into purgatory. And that this essence is what allows the Automats to stay in motion, without needing a key to wind them. Now that I think about it, madame, you obviously are not subject to the harmful effects of these Lanterns. No, au contraire. When activated, these statues reveal an apparatus that allows me to repair myself. It follows that if you destroy these lanterns, the people will be free to fight again. Unfortunately, they are preternaturally strong. Nothing can so much as damage them. Come now, no metal is indestructible. If we knew what these lanterns were made of, perhaps I could find a way to destroy them. Where should I start looking? Start by poking around the factories near Monsieur de Vaucanson's workshop. That's where the automats were forged. I'd wager the lanterns were made there as well. Were you present when the Estates General was dissolved? Oui, madame. I had a front row seat. I witnessed what it cost to defy the crown. We laid bare before the king the abject misery of his subjects. It was more than he could suffer. So he had the people's representatives dispersed by means of bayonets. At least we only had to contend with soldiers made of flesh and blood. Positively angelic compared to the machines that have swept through Paris. Goodbye, Monsieur de Robespierre. Has anyone seen Monsieur de Mirabeau? 
Monsieur Raymond. Aegis, we are very pleased to see you again. It was very unwise of us to leave the Societe without such a capable bodyguard as yourself. It is a miracle that we got here safely. What do you want to talk to me about? Have you ever heard of the Club de Massiac, Aegis? No, monsieur. It's an association that meets at the Hotel de Massiac, just west of Le Al. It counts some of the wealthiest plantation owners in the Empire. Those from Saint-Domingue and the Petite Santé are most formidable adversaries. They are waging a war of influence to keep the slave trade going and resort to the vilest methods to achieve their ends. They worship nothing but money. And their greed is matched only by their cruelty. Regrettably, my interests occasionally require me to suffer their company. Two months ago, I was in La Havre to settle some business with the Admiralty. When I overheard a conversation between two planters from Bastère, if they are to be believed, the Club de Massiac is plotting to create sleepless slaves, des esclaves sans sommeil. Those were their exact words. It's hard to say what this could possibly mean, but I fear they plan to administer some foul drug to their slaves to force them to toil day and night without rest. Our organization will not let these poor souls endure such a hell. Aegis, we must look into this. It is a matter of great urgency. You speak of greed, Monsieur Raymond. But could you enlighten us as to what makes you any different from the planters you condemn? What exactly do you accuse me of, Monsieur de Robespierre? S'il vous plaît, do tell. Do you not also exploit the labor of these poor souls yourself on your indigo plantation? I fight every minute of every day to improve their condition. No one would have the audacity to deny this. If that's the case, then why wait? Free them. You preach abolition, yet you continue to line your pockets at their expense. The truth is, you refuse to upend the established colonial order because your entire fortune depends on it. It's easy to criticize from atop Mount Olympus, Maximilian. You know nothing of the realities of Saint-Domingue. What would happen to all these people if I freed them tomorrow? Without an education, without a livelihood, I would be condemning them to the most abject misery. No, I must act with both compassion and realism. It is true that every reform must be approached with prudence. This reform is not so difficult. I've begun it myself at La Belle Gabrielle, my plantation in Guyane. There you will not find slaves, but workers who earn a weekly wage. And my plantation is no less profitable. Ah, yes, profit. Because that's the most important thing. Don't you see, the law of nature gives every man the right to cultivate his own land. Monsieur, calm yourselves. I implore you. Now is no time to quarrel. What Monsieur Raymond has related to us is extremely worrying. We must find out more about this plot to create sleepless slaves as quickly as possible. Aegis, you are the only one who stands a chance of making it to the Hotel de Massiac alive. Did you go to the Hotel de Massiac? No, not yet. Remember, it's by Le Al, just west of the Marché des Innocents. What is the aim of this organization? We publish articles and exert our influence on those who are in a position to improve the lot of our unfortunate brethren. Our numbers grow by the day, and we have many illustrious members, such as the Comte de Mirabeau and the Marquis de Lafayette. But it was Monsieur Brissot and the Abbot that founded the group. Good old Brissot. Yes, Mon Père, alas, I... See you later, perhaps. My respects, Monseigneur. I didn't expect to see you again so soon, Aegis. We missed you when we had to leave our shelter at Place Saint-Méry. The path that led us to this convent was not an easy one, believe me. Goodbye, Monseigneur. Allez en paix. Monsieur le Marquis. I'm listening, Aegis. I went to the meeting point you indicated. I had an unexpected encounter there. Get to the facts. Who did you meet there? Madame de Polignac, the Queen's favorite. She made no secret of her reason for being in that desolate place. So now I know all about the precious cargo that is the cause of your great concern. Seigneur, the children, 
What happened? Tell me that nothing bad has happened to them. That remains to be determined. One thing is certain. Charlotte and the young Dauphin are missing. The evidence points to an ambush by the Duc d'Orléans' men. They apparently attacked the wagon the children were hiding in. How... how the hell did they know? This ambush could not have taken place without an accomplice. You were betrayed. A plague on Orléans and his damned informants. They have taken the children. That still remains to be seen. It seems that the Duke's men were interrupted while carrying out their task. Three of them lost their lives. A fourth was able to escape. Excellent. I bet it was my hussars who sent the vermin running. But why the hell haven't they reported to me yet? Only they could tell you that. Would you be so kind as to go and find them? The lives of these poor children hang in the balance. My hussars are stationed at Les Invalides. That's from where they were to set off for Gros Caillou. I went to the meeting point. You indicated I had an... Get to the facts. Madame de Pollin, she so now... What? That, the this, that three of the... But why the hell have... Only that... Would you be... My hussa... Goodbye. They fled in that direction. I should be able to find a way in. I have already passed by the Église Sainte-Marie. I can get back there quickly from here. 